In this video, we're going to cover examples of what we call gas forming reactions. So uh, in the previous video, we looked at neutralization reactions in the context of making a weak electrolyte or water. In this video, we're going to look at neutralization reactions, but in the context of forming a gas. So with gas forming reactions, obviously one of the products is going to be a gas. And there are a few examples. So the first main example are carbonates. So what happens with carbonates is uh, the following. So if we take calcium carbonate, and uh, this is a solid, and we add HCl to it, the calcium carbonate will react with HCl. And if you were to do your partner exchange, which is what you normally would do, you'd get the following two products. You would get calcium chloride, aqueous, and you would get H2CO3 aqueous. And normally you would go on and say, well, okay, this seems like a perfectly reasonable reaction. I'm making H2CO3. That's an acid. It's not a strong acid since it's not on the list. So this is just another example of a neutralization reaction. Well, it turns out this is called carbonic acid. And it is unstable in water. And what happens is this will go on to decompose and form two other products. It will instantaneously decompose to make carbon dioxide gas plus H2O liquid. So you will not write in this metathesis reaction H2CO3 because it, it only exists for a matter of a fraction of a second. It instantly decomposes to carbon dioxide and water. So the correct way to write this reaction is that calcium carbonate plus 2HCl aqueous gives calcium chloride aqueous plus CO2 gas plus H2O liquid. The main reason why we, we don't write the carbonic acid is because it decomposes to carbon dioxide and water. So there, carbonate comes in two forms. The first is carbonate. And then we can have another form called the bicarbonate ion. So carbonate is the CO3 2 minus anion. And the bicarbonate anion is the HCO3 minus anion. Um, so these are in your table that you had to memorize. Bicarbonate's official name is um, hydrogen carbonate. I just want to mention that. So you have bicarbonate and then you have, you can also call that an, a synonymous name is hydrogen carbonate. That's probably the more official name. Um, so in the case of carbonate, we saw that if you add 2H plus aqueous to this, it is going to give you carbon dioxide and water. So the carbonate requires two equivalents of protons in order to make those products. The, the bicarbonate requires only one equivalent of protons. So this will make carbon dioxide gas and H2O with just one equivalent of protons because it has an extra proton built into it. It has the H already in the HCO3. So th th those are the two forms of carbonate. And you'll, these are the general net ionic reactions that I just showed. So if you were to write the net ionic from the above reaction, these would be the net ionics for carbonate and bicarbonate. So that's why I, sh I wanted to show this. Okay, so let's look at another example. So and a second example is uh, the sulfite examples. So it turns out that sulfite is, has the same, almost the same exact chemistry, except the, it, instead of making carbon dioxide, it makes uh, sulfur dioxide. So again, you have two forms. You have sulfite and you have hydrogen sulfite. So the sulfite anion is SO3, 2 minus, and the hydrogen sulfite anion is the SO3 minus. So again, if we add an acid to this, and these are the net ionics, so if you see this ion built into something else, like Na2SO3 2 minus, or it could be calcium sulfite, the chemistry will be the same, but I'm just showing you the net ionic. Uh, this is 2 plus 2H plus aqueous will give SO2 gas plus H2O liquid. And uh, like its car car uh, hydrogen carbonate precursor, this will take one equivalent of protons and make SO2 gas and H2O liquid. So that's sulfite. Okay, now the third example is uh, hydrogen sulfide gas. So this is uh, sulfide or S2 minus. 
So sodium sulfide or any sulfide plus uh, we can add HCl. This will react and if we do our partner exchange we get H2S and we get uh, N2 NaCl aqueous. Now it turns out that hydrogen sulfide is a gas under room temperature conditions. So at room temperature and pressure, um, hydrogen sulfide will bubble out as a gas. And this has that rotten egg smell that we see in a couple of our different uh, lab experiments. So it's a neutralization reaction. We're taking an acid and a base and we're putting them together and we're neutralizing them, except the product here is a gas. So we note that uh, hydrogen sulfide is a gas at room conditions. So let's just quickly write the net ionic for the sulfide gas reaction. So in this case, if you were to write the net ionic, the two ions that are built into the hydrogen sulfide are 2H plus aqueous plus S2 minus aqueous gives H2S gas. So that's the net ionic for that reaction. Our final example is gonna be the formation of ammonia gas. And in this case, this is the first time where we're gonna react a compound. We're gonna react the ammonium ion with a base. So the general idea here is that we have the ammonium ion, the ammonium cation, plus a base. And so, for example, we would have NH4Cl aqueous, this is ammonium chloride, plus NaOH aqueous. And when we do our partner exchange, we're going to get NH4OH, and we're going to get NaCl aqueous. Now it turns out that NH4OH will spontaneously decompose uh, into NH3 gas plus H2O liquid. So that NH4OH, that ammonium hydroxide, is an unstable compound similar to the carbonate and sulfate, the um, carbonic acid, and it will decompose into ammonia and water. So the correct way of writing this is not to write ammonium hydroxide, but it is to write NH4Cl aqueous plus NaOH aqueous gives NH3 gas plus H2O liquid plus NaCl aqueous. And if we were to write the net ionic for this, we have NH4 plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous gives NH3 gas plus H2O liquid. So these are the four examples of gas forming reactions. Again, they're all examples of neutralization reactions. So you're taking an acid and a base. The only difference here is that instead of them making a weak electrolyte or water, they make some form of a gas. Um, so that, that's the end of metastasis reactions. And in the next series of videos, we're gonna look at oxidation reduction reactions.